folks, welcome back. I have your latest home prices and insights for York Region for week ending June 29th, 2022. Let me share a story. I'm laughing already thinking about this story. Let me share a story with you that has me completely mind boggled. I, we've done a fair bit of transactions and I've never seen this before. We have a listing, we receive an offer. Wonderful. We're negotiating back and forth, and it's late at night, very late, after 11, and everything has been agreed to already. We, make, we made all the changes on the agreement of purchase and sale on the offer. It gets sent back to the buyer's agent, and we've agreed to everything. So all that's left is for those buyers to accept. That's it. The agent calls me back and says, I can't reach them. I've sent it to them for electronic signatures. Everything is electronic signatures these days. I've sent it to them for electronic signatures, but I can't reach them. But no worries. I know they go to sleep early because they wake up early, he tells me. So I think, oh, okay, we'll resolve this in the morning is the way we left it. I thought it was very strange, though. I, I had no choice. I wanted it accepted and done so my clients can go to bed, the sellers can go to bed knowing their property is sold, all is good. Can't reach these buyers that were so eager to negotiate with us all evening. Can't reach them now. Okay, maybe I thought it's possible that they went to bed. I just found it strange. Next morning, I get a call from the buyer's agent saying they go to work early. I've messaged them, I've spoke to them, I'll either hear from them on their lunch break or we'll have to finalize all this in the evening. And I'm thinking, this is nuts. They were so eager to buy. What happened? And later that afternoon, I receive another offer on the property and I'm thinking, hooray, this is fantastic. If those buyers are not in the picture anymore, I have another offer to deal with and I can still get the sale that my seller client is hoping for. We're going through the offer and at the end it occurs to me and, and now this this offer was not as good as the first one and it had some ridiculous conditions in there like financing for two weeks and home inspection for another two weeks and, and I think like, what are they talking about? Nobody needs all that time. Home inspection for two weeks. You can do it in three days, two days. But ridiculous. And it was 100000 less than the first offer that we couldn't finalize. But the crazy part is, is that this second offer that was terrible, it's the same buyers. It's the same buyers that submitted an offer with a different realtor drove me, I, I couldn't believe it. So I called that second agent and I say, you know, how long have you known these buyers? And he says, well, they just called me now. They said they like this house. They want to put in an offer. I'm like, what? what, what is, how does that make sense? They just put an offer yesterday with somebody else. I go, you know, I already have an offer from these guys. He doesn't know that. So I tell him, I call the other agent, the first agent. I say, you know, I know why you can't get a hold of your buyers because they just put an offer with another agent. I, the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Um, what can I say? If I, I don't know what these buyers were thinking. They weren't. It's the only conclusion they weren't thinking. If you think you're the smartest person in the room, if you think you're smarter than everybody else, you're probably not. And this person wasted everybody's time. Now, I know some of you are not so fond of realtors, so eh, it's okay, waste the realtor's time, whatever. But they wasted my client's time, my sellers that were they're up all night. The whole family is excited about this sale because they want to move on to their next place. What a, I, I felt so bad for my clients that these buyers wasted everybody's time. Anyways, I want to share that story because there are some crazy, crazy things that happen out there. Let's get into the numbers. If you 
you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, selling, buying, really simple. Below this video in the description is a link to my calendar. Click on that. Book a time that's convenient for you. This way, I'll know ahead of time. I'll make sure I'm organized to be able to be free to speak to you about whatever's on your mind. And if you're looking for a building lot in Richmond Hill, check out the video at the end of this video. Let's get into the numbers. Lots of panic selling going on across York region. I have Vaughn here. I'm going to be talking about Vaughn, Richmond Hill, and Markham. Detached properties only. And then I'm going to talk about condos for all of York region. So we're starting with Vaughn. Detached properties. I have a whole year here broken down by week. Where are the sales? They're so small here. I could bear. There's so few sales. I could barely read the number. We sold only 25 detached properties in Vaughan. If you think that's a little, wait till you see some of the other cities. 25 were sold. Eight of those, a huge percentage of those were sold at $2 million or more. I don't know why I'm laughing about that. So 25 were sold. Eight of those were sold at $2 million or more. Average sold price went up a little bit from the previous week. Average sold price is now at $1,855,000. Remember the days where average sold price was 2.2, 2.3 million? Yeah, those days are gone. Long gone. Ancient history. It's, it's you know, you got to flip through the, the history books to read that. We're now at 1,855,000, which is 8% higher than what it was a year ago. And median price is 2% higher than what it was a year ago. Why do I show average sold price and median price? Well, it's different data sets. They give a different set of numbers. Some of you like average sold price. Some of you like median price. I, I like them both for different reasons. So if we look at median price, three months ago it was 1.9 million. It's now 1,550,000. Um, big difference. 1.9, 1,550 big difference in a span of three months. So of the 25 that sold, 28% sold at list price or more. Last year at this time, 60% were selling at list price or more. It was a different world. But that was a year ago. It doesn't matter what's happening right now. Well, as far as sales year to date goes, we have 40% fewer sales in Vaughn for detached properties, remember, I'm just talking about detached properties, 40% fewer sales this year, year to date, than what we were selling last year. That's a huge difference in volume. Listings, we listed 73, but year to date listings, 16% fewer listings this year than what we were listing last year. And months of inventory came down a little bit, it's now sitting at three months of inventory and the average days on market is 15. Now, just on this chart, we're going to, when we go back to March 30th, three months ago, months of inventory was 0 0.8, a little bit more competitive than what it is right now. And we go back a little further, it used to be 0 0.5. It's just a different world and it seems, it's taken three or four months, but it seems like it's an overnight difference. Let's look at Richmond Hill. And like I said, if you thought 25 was low for sales in Vaughn, we got 12 detached properties that were sold in Richmond Hill. Two of those were at $2 million or more. Average sold price has come up, but it's, it's I mean, even at 20 or 30 properties, it's tough to get a, a real valid or, or a, a, an average sold price you can have confidence in. Well, at 12, it's much, much harder. So average sold price, 1,763,000. We used to be in a 2.2 mil. Now we're at 1,763,000, which is 4% lower than what it was a year ago. And if we go back one, two, th four weeks now, average sold price in Richmond Hill has been between 2% and 5% lower than what it was a year ago. Median price is 1% higher than it was a year ago. Median price is sitting basically at 1.6 million in Richmond Hill. Of the 12 that sold, I don't even know if it matters, a third of those were sold 
at list price or more. Year to date sales for, for Richmond Hill, we have 37% fewer sales this year than what we were selling last year. Listings, we have 19% year to date fewer listings and months of inventory has shot way up. It's now sitting at 5.2 and I, I could tell you why. When, you, when you, you have certain amount of sales and then the following week sales drop right down to 12, which is what's happening at Richmond Hill, well, we take the current sales to figure out months of inventory, like how much stock, if we buy at the current rate, and that's why months of inventory has shot up. Months of inventory is high, but this, you know, at 5.2, that's not really, it doesn't make sense. If next week we get 30, 35 sales, which is very likely, or 25 sales even, months of inventory is going to come back down. Still, it's high. It's in the, right now it's sitting at 5.2 and the average days on market is sitting at 18. It, the previous week it was 25 average days on market. Let's look at Markham. 20 sales were done. 20 detached properties were sold in Markham. So Vaughn at 25 sales is like the high roller here. So Markham, 20 were sold. Detached properties, two of those were at $2 million or more. Average sold price has come way down from the previous week. It's now sitting at 1,559,000, not the 2.2 million that we had before, 1,559,000, which is 1% lower than what it was a year ago. Median price is 9% lower than what it was a year ago. Median price in Markham is sitting at 1,000,000. 475,000. 48% fewer sales this year, year to date, versus last year. 48% in no time at all. If we continue at the pace we're at in no time at all, we'll be at at least half, 50% less sales. Uh, things are pretty quiet in Markham right now. Listings are 25% fewer listings year to date. Months of inventory, no surprise, has gone up. It's now sitting at 2.7 months of inventory and average days on market is 17. Folks, these are the real numbers. I'm bringing you up right up to June 29th. This is reality. If we go past June 29th, if, we go, if I talk about the future, that's an opinion. But all this, this is the real numbers that are happening in, in our industry right now in real estate. York Region condos, 34 condos were sold. Three of those were at $1 million or more. Average sold price is $745,000. <clears> Excuse me, our peak of eight thirty-seven. we're now at seven forty-five. dollars I've said it before, I mean, you can see the numbers here. Percentage-wise, condos are outperforming the detached market right now. 745 is 20% higher than what it was a year ago. Median price is 15% higher than what it was a year ago. Uh, median price three months ago was 750. Now it's 695,000. So in three months, median price has come down 55,000. In the detached market, median price has come down 300, 400,000, depending on which, which area you're looking at. Of the 34 that sold, 38% sold at list price or more. Man, last year at this time, we sold 77 condos. This year, only 34 condos in the same week. 28% fewer condo sales this year, year to date versus last year. 6% more listings this year versus last year. And months of inventory came up just a little bit. It's now sitting at 3.4 months of inventory with 20 days being the average days on market. That's York Region. Here's a quick summary. Except for Vaughn where months of inventory came down, but it's still high at three. All the other months of inventory has gone up. I, I, I'm saying this a few times. Although technically we're approaching a balanced market, because of the high that we've come off of, it's, it feels very much like a buyer's market and depending on what you're doing, selling, buying, there's opportunities or you decide, you know, with the right advice, what's best for you. Advice is always important, especially from
people who've, who've done it before and have been on the road, make sure you get advice from the right people that can, can advise you and your family the best possible way of what to do. And sometimes doing nothing could be the answer. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. So here's a residential lot just waiting for you to build on. It's at 53 Grange Drive in Richmond Hill. It's a popular, it's in the popular Jefferson neighborhood. It's 45 feet by 98 feet and it slopes slightly to the back. So it should accommodate a home with a walkout basement.